This is a picture in Rome. And um, as you can see, here we go. Um, what we're gonna do is like an evening shot. It's a little evening, sun's going down, and um, no people in there, probably at the time when no people were walking around in Italy. And so what we're gonna do is we are gonna, I, as you can see my drawing here, what I did is I brought it down a little bit farther. There's not enough water here. I thought I'd bring it down a little bit for the, for the water part. All right, we're gonna start here with lights and darks like we always do. And um, push it over here a little bit. And so again, I don't look at the, um, at the photo for colors. Um, I kind of look at the photo just for the values. And I already put some maskoid down. As you can see, this, this little blue things here. Those little blue things are this maskoid. Um, I hope I make some masking fluid. That's really nice. I, did, I didn't use the pen this time because it's a little bit bigger. So when you're doing a bigger area, you kind of use the masking fluid to put in those parts that are going to be white or light, very light. So on the side of the bridge right there, this part right here, the building, those I want to go through. I want to do big washes. So I don't want to stop and have to go around those little areas. So that's why I use the um, mask wipe. All right, so, and again, I don't use the color that's on the photo, I just look for the values. So I want to like, make it a little bit more dramatic, the sky. The sky is kind of boring there to me. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go in here with a little bit more water. And again, these buildings are darker than the, and then the, the buildings are darker than the sky. So the sky will go right through these buildings, right? Because you're going to be putting the darks on top of that. Let's go in here and just wet it all up because I'm the big floater of the pigment. I like floating my pigment. And so at the same time when I'm doing this, I'm going to go all the way down to this part of the bridge. Okay, that's a good spotting point right there because this is going to be over. So these things, the sky and the water are going to be the same colors. So actually I'm going to have to wet that too. Okay, we'll do that right away too. <laughs> you don't have to, you can kind of stop there. But like this building, I can put that color in there for right now. So let's go in here and really wet it up. I wet everything. I tend to use um, a lot of water wet into wet. A lot of get them all my soft edges first. To clean in the middle of my palette again. So I'm gonna make an evening. In the evening, the skies are kind of warm. The sun's going down, right? And you get a nice little orange glow a lot of times in the evening. So I'm mixing a little bit of that in there. And then um, this building has that glow, right? So let's we'll go right over that building, right into this wall. It has a glow of a little orange in there. Goes into the sky and it gets lighter. Right in the background here, it's going to be a little lighter, brighter also. How about brighter? That's good. And then as I go up, I'm going to make it a little, bit, like I said, a little bit more dramatic than that. So what I need to do then. Yellow and purple are complements, of course. Um, orange and blue, so this is kind of orangey, so I can use blues and purples with the, with the yellows. And I might as well put this right into the water too, because that's reflecting in the light area of the water, right? Put that right in there too, right in the back there. And again, this is gonna dry 20% lighter because it's about the pigment. Once the water goes away, then um, Whatever pigments left, that's what you kind of the value you you will get. Let's go into a little bit of purple here, and let's make a dramatic sky. Let's let it drop down. Put some little drama in here. See, it's all nice and wet. Um, I use this is lavender. It has a little bit of a um, little bit of white in it. This lavender. I have a lot of colors that have a little bit more of opaqueness to them. That's okay. Um, if you put it into water, it becomes transparent. And it's just a more of a pastel color. And so why do watercolors not get to use pa pastel colors like pastel artists? We should be able to allow to use that too because a lot of people don't think that you should use opaque colors. But like again, if you use them very, very wet and float them, then they become transparent less like any other color and you just get that pastel looking color. Like the pinks and the purples and the lavenders and the lilacs. This is like I got some li lilac there. And actually, this is not my normal palette. Where's my other palette? Oh well. <laughs> I just noticed this is not my, my everyday palette. But it has the same colors in it, just different spots. So 
here. Let's put a little bit of blue, a little bit of light blue. This light blue it also has a little bit of white in it. So I'll just get that in there. If you wanted to make the sky like that really smooth, then you just let it, you know, you smooth it out with your brush. You go back and forth and then just let it bleed out. It does it all by itself. Again, you don't have to blend watercolor. It does it on its own if you float it. Oh, look how bright that is. No, oh, sorry about that. All right, so here we go. And work it until you get it done. Don't leave the area until it's done. Too many people will go back and forth and over and over. It's not oil painting. It's not, not um, acrylic where you go over and over and do things. No, you get it done and leave. Leave that area alone. Once you get it done, move on. That's the best thing about it. You, know, you don't have to sit there and mess with it all the whole time. And as long as it's wet, it's gonna, as long as the paint is floating in the water, it's going to blend itself really nice and smooth. These lights my brother um, is lending me are some really nice lights. He's a, my brother's a photographer, and um, they're LED lights, and um, I have right now four of them, and it's almost blinding me. <laughs> so we're going to go in here and just get some of this color into the water, right? I mean, it's going to be the same color. This water, I'm not sure, I haven't been to Rome yet, but I do want to go there. I had a friend that just went there, um, and she said it was awesome. So it's like, I'm thinking this, it looks like a beautiful place for watercolors. There you go, again up here. And watch that you keep the shine. If the shine is there, that means there's water there. Once you lose that shine and you get some matte, kind of a matte finish, don't touch it because your brush is going to be wetter than that surface. And that's when you're going to get the watermarks. But as long as it's wet and it's floating, your pigment's floating, it's just going to blend itself together. You don't have to do very much. You just kind of put it in there. And again, I go over these things because I want the big washes. If you do little pieces, if you do little pieces, then what happens is that it doesn't all blend together. It, it just doesn't look as nice. Just kind of go through things, go through them really nice and get those big washes in there. Let the watercolor do its own thing. It's the best thing about watercolor. You don't have to do very much. You just let it, you know, put it down and leave it. I know that sounds kind of weird, but it, it works. <laughs> All right, so it looks like it's about the big parts are there. You know, as much as you can get in and the first washes, the better. You know, if you can get all that stuff in there and get out the faster, the better it is. Like, I'm not going to put the darks in. I'm just putting, I'm coloring. I'm doing the lights, and these are the colors of my lights. So you're pretty much doing your value pattern um, along as you're going along. You're doing your lights, middle tones, and then your darks. And your darks are your details. So here is just the light color. The color of the objects right now is what I'm doing. And this, um, see this masking fluid repels it a little bit, so you think it stays white, which a lot of the masking fluids they don't um, repel it, and so it goes. The watercolor goes right over it, and you don't know quite what is part, what is masked, and what isn't. Masked. Okay, that's a good word. Masking fluid. So there we go. We have a little bit of white all around, and you can tell those are going to be spots that are going to be light later on. It gets in there a little bit. There's going to be a tree over there. So when you touch the um, the painting to see if it's dry or not, um, use the back of your hand because you don't want to use the fingers, the front of the fingers, because they have oil on them. So always use the back. They may have oil back there too, depending on what you're doing. But um, use the back of your hand, just feel it. And if it's um, damp, you know, don't do anything because what's going to happen is it's just going to bleed into that area. So now we're going to go get the background buildings, the ones in the very distance. See this whole section right here is all one wash. And there's detail in there, but this is going to be lighter, and so it sits back. So you want to keep it back there. So, and also, it doesn't matter what color these buildings are, because the, the sky is engulfing that area. It's called aerial perspective. Aerial perspective makes those buildings look like the color of the sky, because it's engulfing it. So we're going to use a little bit of the colors that I have in the sky, and a little bit of the color of the buildings, which is basically gray, right? So, um, you just kind of go in there. Hopefully you're, you're dry enough to get a hard edge, because how do you get a hard edge? You wait for the paper to dry. That's how you get hard edges. 
going to go in here and then just I'm putting these all together as one building. I don't go out and do every, every window, every arch, every roof, every antenna. No, I go do the whole building together. And like the, the top of this building is um, a darker, is a darker roof. So boom, right over that. Don't have to worry about going around all this stuff. Cause then you're going to get those little white edges on everything. So just go through, go through everything. The overall value of this whole, this whole area is all one kind of value. And the detail you can always put in later with um, little dabs of the same value. And I put maskoid down for my building so where it's going to be light, except for this big one here. That one I didn't, so that one I should be going around. But it happens to be a little wet right here, and so that's not doing a good job of staying right there. All right, so that's the background. We're going to keep on going. This whole background here, I'm just going to go in there. This is the background. And look at the color. I have blue, purple, and whatever color you have here. Just put it all in. Put it all in there, nice and light. I'm looking more for the values than I am for the color. The colors, you know, I'm going to use, once I use them there, I know what I use, so then just keep on using a little bit of those colors. As long as you hit, you hit, the, hit the values right, that's a little bit more important than the actual color. I mean, look at how many different paintings um, you can do in the same painting over and over again, but depending on what kind of colors you use, it makes it look all totally different. Just have fun with the colors. Use the colors, use your favorite colors. A lot of people always ask me what colors to use at these workshops, and they I tell them, well, a red, a blue, an orange, a yellow. You know, which exact one? You know, that's up to you. you everybody likes different colors, so you use ones that you like. And then I'll teach you how to get them the right values for whatever you're doing in the area you're painting them in. So now we're just going to go over here. i got to do a workshop in Rome one of these days. This looks like a beautiful, beautiful place. So here we go in here again. All this stuff in front, all these buildings in front, they are going to be in front of this light. So I could go like this and nothing's going to happen to that. That's going to be perfectly fine because the darker shadows will make those buildings come forward and then the dark trees will come forward. So you don't have to be so worried about going around every little thing. All right, so the, those buildings now will be reflecting in the water also, right? Because this building right here is probably right here. So pick those colors that you just used. You have them in your palette already. They're also already wet. Just go in here and put them in there. So you just a little bit of... And they can be hard-edged, but there's not much value there, so they're not going to pop out so much. Don't worry about that. We'll worry about that later when we need to do the darks. Right now we're just getting the lights. This is probably the middle tones now. We're getting into the middle tones. Getting dark as we go along. So fun stuff. I could be on the bridge. Yeah, I'm actually probably standing on the bridge. That's probably on, a, on this side of the, of the river, right? And so it's like you're out there in Rome. All right, so what else are we going to do here? I think next is going to be the next step buildings in front, which are a little bit darker. So these buildings right here are going to be a little bit darker. All right, so now I'm just mixing up some colors that are going to be a little bit darker than what I just used. That's the whole background. And there's no detail yet in here. I can put that in there later when, I, um, when it's finally really all, all dry. And then I go in there, I'll get the little fine little details and stuff. But you know, you really don't have to get much of the detail in there. Just a few things here and there. This is not photographic. I'm going, going more post-impressionistic. You know, it's not like I have to get every little window in there. So let's go in here. And this is not the dark darks yet. This is the, still the middle tone, but darker, the darker middle tones. And of course, purple is my favorite color, so you're going to see me always going to a lot of purples, right? But, like I always tell my students, use the colors that you like. You know, it's your painting. You do whatever you want. It's your painting. Make it look fun for you. I like purple. And when I see that, that beautiful purple painting, hmm. And um, the pap paper I'm using, again, is Stonehenge Aqua by Legion. 
They're the ones that also make the um, Aqua Black, the first black paper, watercolor paper out there on the market. They just posted, um, today they posted one of my, um, they're using one of my paintings for an ad for the black, and they just posted it on Instagram. So if you go to the Legion Papers Instagram, you'll see one of my paintings I've done. And so you notice I'm using a darker color and I'm not making like this building looks like it's light. This one looks like it's maybe a little red brick. You can put a that in there, but I'm not worrying about the actual color of the brick. People tend to try to copy exactly what the brick color is. Again, this is aerial perspective. You're gonna get all these other things bouncing in there. So yes, you can put a little bit of the red in there, but don't give it so much of a thought that you have to make exactly what you see in that photograph. And you're an artist, create, create better things than what's in the photograph. So I'm going to go in here, this is going to be like a little shadow. A little warmer here, because this is my area of interest. This is my center of interest. I like to call it area because if you say center of interest, a lot of people think that it's a one object, like it's this bridge. No, it's this whole area. It's the whole area that's your center of interest. Or, like I said, area of interest. So this is a big tree right there. I'm going to go in here. A little bit of purples in there. So it's going to be dry. Again, it's going to dry 20% lighter. Remember, it's going to be drawing 20% lighter when it dries. So if it looks right while it's wet, it's wrong. It's going to dry, 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 dry lighter. Hardest thing for my students to get, and myself included. I'm pretty bad at it sometimes. That's the background. We can put the rooftops. That's a, that's a tree. We get the shadow the side of that building. All right, we're going to go over here. See, I'm just playing in my darks, my darker, my middle tone darks. And in here. I'm a little bit more careful than I am with other paintings that are like landscapes and stuff because I mean it is buildings and you have to get kind of a straight line on these buildings. I mean they're not all built. You know, I know they're old but they're not all crooked. So you can get some nice straight lines in here. And then that's going to be a, it's gonna be a more of a warmish color over here. So let's see what we got here. We got this this building right here is actually all red brick. So I'll make that one just a little bit of red. And since it got red here, I'll we'll just jump back and forth. We get a little bit of both these colors on both sides here. So again, this is practice. Today I'm again practicing. I've got these new lights. I wanted to see how these new lights are going on. But we're still going to try to get some um, better setup with the cameras and stuff. But it's all, all the plan. We're getting there. Little by little, we'll get there. And here, we're just gonna put a little bit of texture in there. And so again, these are my middle tones, not my dark darks. My dark darks will be the tops, the trees, the things that are really gonna pop forward. Right now, I'm just getting the big areas of middle tone darks. Middle tone darks. And basically my color palette is pretty much blues and oranges, right? I mean, with a little bit of purple, not as much as my last two paintings I did with you guys. But, um, so I'm getting a little bit more blue in this one. But you always have to have a little bit of purple in there. It's the magic color, I call it. So back here now we get a little tone. That bridge is going to be darker, so why am I going around it? See? I have to catch myself. Go through. If it's gonna be darker, if that bridge is gonna be darker, just go through it if you're doing the background part of it. You don't need to worry. Anytime you do pieces, it doesn't hold together as well because then the paint will be different in that spot compared to this one and then this spot. But if you go through, of course it's gonna be all the same, right? And again, this bridge is gonna be darker, so go right through. See, I gotta convince myself that same, same thing, right? Here we go. 
Let's have some fun here. Get some purple and blue in there. Lavender, um, permanent violet, as I use. And again, these are all whole bank colors. I use whole bank colors. Again, why do I use whole bank colors? Because they don't have ox skull in them. And they stay, this is an old palette I just grabbed over there. I didn't realize it was an old palette, but look at how vibrant. So I probably didn't use this one for three months, but look at how beautiful violet, vibrant they are. Vibrant, vibrant colors they do, they make. Okay, now we're gonna go get the shoreline. Go right in here. I get my middle tones again and my water. So quickly here. I try to limit my um, demonstrations to at least half hour to 45 minutes. I don't like going a little bit longer because then I get bored too. I'm sure you guys get bored. So I'm just going to try to get as quick as I can. So we're going to go in here, get some shadows across here, some medium shadows. I'm thinking medium tones. I'm not thinking darks yet. You've got to go from light, medium to dark. Sometimes you, you may have to establish a dark to see what your darkest dark is going to be. That's not a big deal. It's not a problem and definitely you can do that. And so here we go through. And I don't have to worry about the mask white. It'll keep my light lights. Okay, there's my second wash, right? Not that big a deal. Come on, you can, you can do this. So my workshop in June is a watercolor, um, watercolor workshop at Dillman's coming up in June, end of June. I also do paint parties there. Um, I haven't done a paint party now, and I used to do them every every week, but um, this darn virus. So what we're going to do is um, hopefully we get some paint parties going again. There's the little shadows. I'll have to get one of those one of these days. All right, so now, darks. Uh, maybe just a few little bit, um, details in here, just to kind of get those in there in the background. Just a few, just to show that, uh, not dark, these are not darks, these are just the uh, same lights that are going over, just to give myself, give me self, give me self, give myself a few little details back here. All right, that's enough. Just enough to give yourself a little bit of some stuff that's happening back there. Now, the really nice detail. Wait, wait, two more things here. Hold on. Okay, so now dark darks. What are the dark darks? The rooftops, the windows, the trees, the, the bridge railing. Um, the side of the bridge is pretty dark. Um, this tree, this big huge tree, this pole, this antenna, the flag. So all that stuff is the dark and that's all detail. So that's what we're at night at now. And so you have to make, definitely make sure that your paper is dry at this point because you want hard, hard edges and you want darks. This palette, I don't have black in it. And my other palette, I have black. I don't mind using black. If you mix color with the black, it comes out to a nice colorful black. But since I don't, I'm going to have to mix my own black here, or dark. There's no big deal either. Have yeah, fun. Just do whatever. So here we go. Oh, just a little bit of detail, so I hold my wrist a little bit, or put your pink, pinky down to steady your hand. Let's go in here, and there's a the rooftop. Top of that. Something up there, a little, yeah, another rooftop. These rooftops are nice and dark. And this is an evening scene. They're probably red, red tiled roofs, but because again, because the um, sky is engulfing them, it doesn't make them quite as dark then. I'm gonna put a couple of windows in there. Here's the building, nice dark rooftop. Antennas you can get later too. I should be using my rectangular brush for rectangular windows, right? Use the brush that best fits the purpose. Sorry, I listen to myself. Don't do that very often, so here, here we go. So now, see that's a rectangle, so it doesn't look like just like a window. 
So look at this. You can go boom, boom, boom. Windows. Smart, huh? So here, put those down there. And I'm not getting every single window in there. I, you know, there's too many in that city scene. And there's a lot of buildings in there, but it, I'm mean, giving the illusion of all these windows. It's not. A, I'm not doing a portrait of that window. I'm doing a whole scene of Rome. Is that the is that the Vatican? I'm not even sure. And so here we go. Also coming up, I will have a monitor in front of me so that if you are asking questions, which you probably are, but I do not see them, um, I'll be able to answer them. But not yet. That's going to be coming up when I finally get this all worked out. Matter of fact, I may be talking to myself right now. I don't even know who's watching. <laughs> I haven't looked over. I tend to talk to myself anyways and, and sing a lot when I'm painting. But you don't want to hear me sing. No, that's, you don't want to do that. All right, there's a new dark tree right there. So I move on over here. Get some nice shadows in here. Here's this like little castle that type of looking building. A little castle. Boom, 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 boom. Sound effects are fun to do too when you're painting. It's always good. Bam. The line. So what's the secret of painting good paintings? Do a lot of them. I just realized I have thousands of paintings in my studio. Looking through all these demos that I do. And um, I'm putting them online now, so if you want to purchase one, I'm getting, little by little getting a lot of them on there. But I have done a lot of paintings, and that's how you could get better. You just have to do a lot of paintings. Gotta make those mistakes. Gotta make those mistakes and just keep on going. And, um, and there's probably a painting on the back of this. I, I, I do a lot of different paintings on the back of other paintings. They don't turn out exactly. Uh, some more rooftops over here. So the rooftops. Those back there can't be as dark as these because these are a little bit farther forward, right? So you can't do those as dark. All right, so that's kind of like the background parts a little bit better. Hold on. A lot of stuff you make up. I'm not, I'm not looking at every little detail in there. As long as you're close, that's good enough. All right, this bridge is darker, right? So I'm not gonna use that brush. It's a little bit too small to get such a big area. So now, ooh, I gotta show, wash that one before. All right, so there we go. I'll get this nice bright color. So it's really blue in the picture, but why would you make it really blue? It's warm, it should come forward a little bit. So I'm gonna make it a little bit warmer, warmer color. Maybe a little bit blue. And a lot of times what I do, at first I wet the surface. And I'm going to leave the top of the bridge a little light, which it isn't in the picture really. But this way it'll look like the top of that bridge is lit up a little bit. And here we go. We're just going to... If you do ask a question, um, and if somebody's watching, if, um, if you're asking a question, I will answer it later on after I'm done here. And I will always put these on um, YouTube afterwards also, besides Facebook. So if you want to ask questions, ask them later. And I will, um, I'll definitely answer you back. And see how once it's wet, that's when I start dripping all kinds of colors in there. You can put anywhere you want. Look at it, I put a little orange in there. Put a little purple in there and let them mix themselves together. You don't have to mix here, because if I do this, look, watch this. If I do this, it's just gonna be a gray. If I do it here, and I just take a nice little color, and I just pop it on the top, it just blends itself together with what's underneath it, with what's underneath it, right? So just go like this, and get that in there. There we go, a little darker here and there. That's what the bridge is anyways, there's some dark parts, light parts. 
Use the colors that you're using other places. A little bit brighter now because I'm, I'm coming forward, so a little bit brighter. Brighter colors make it make your painting come forward, make the objects come forward a little bit. Let's go in here. There we go, a little by little. It's looking better. They're coming forward. They look like bricks. They look like a bridge. I'm not a big painter of things. I paint areas. I paint an area that needs to be light or dark or medium. And the color, you know, if it's forward like this, I, I told you, it has to be a little bit more warm or cool, but brighter. And, and you, the you of the color should be a little bit more warm, brighter in color. And just let it float. You don't have to mix. Let them mix themselves together. And again, don't follow that to, to a T. You don't need to follow that painting to a T. The drawing is important. I mean, a lot of times I'm drawing, I, drew, I freehanded this one from the small picture. Sometimes if I'm doing a big one, I'll even use the projector. No big deal. Because um, the drawing is important. And if you're not getting, I tell my students, if your drawing is not on and you're doing a portrait especially, I mean, why even paint it? Because it's not going to look like that person and it's not going to look good, no matter how good you are with the paint, with the paint itself. So don't be afraid of even using a projector. I have had some people learn how to draw from a projector. It's not a, it's not a bad, it's just a tool. And it's very important to draw, learn how to draw. And I'm actually right now in the process of it. It's been like three years now. I've been writing a book on how to, how to draw from your imagination. It'll be coming up hopefully pretty soon. If I get some time. Now these colors are going to be reflecting into the water right away, right? So that bridge is pretty much done. And so now right away, since I got these colors, I've been using these colors right here. So why not right away take those same colors and reflect them into the water because that's what's showing in the water. The water doesn't have color, but it may be like Chicago water where it's nice and green. But, um, but you, you use the color that's from the bridge and still that's the color that you want to use. On the bridge up here, bring it down, and see how my bro my uh, rectangular brush, my flat brush, is um, very sharp, and so I go back and forth and I get these nice hard, sharp edges. The waves and the water is laying flat, so I'm not going to do lines this way. I'm going to do my brush this way, back and forth, and getting the little waves. If I do them like this, I mean that's going to look like there's something in the water. You want to put it back and forth like this, right? And there's a little bit of a seawall. And there's a little shadow here. And so this is the bridge. Oh, what was that thing? So here we go. We're going down here. And then, of course, this, this little wall right here. Let's put that in there real quick. Cool. And then, same thing, water always lays flat, so you cannot, uh, I shouldn't say you cannot, you can always do anything you want. You can go downwards too at times when you leave a soft edge, when you first do it, you can do that. But for our waves that are waving, you know, across the water, you do them nice and flat and you do them back and forth. Now, if you did them like this, wavy, you know, like the waves that kids do, the waves like this, that means a tsunami is coming into Rome. Um, so you don't want that. You want to just make it back and forth, back and forth like this. And the color is just darker of the water and then a little bit of the color that's above reflecting into the water. Always first the color of the water darker and then the color of what's above it. Best way of doing um, reflections in water. First the color of the water darker and then the color that's reflecting into the, into the water. Hurry up here a little bit. It's kind of long. I don't like long demos. I want to get done quick. Some dark here. See, I really <laughs> just dab all over. Just pick up something. It's going to be good. Just need something dark. All right, 
I think, one more time to drying. And then we'll, oh no, we'll do the tree here and then we'll dry it and we'll get the mascot off of there and then we're done. Get you guys will go have dinner then. Or are you eating dinner right now when you're watching? <laughs> All right, so let's see, we're gonna do, um, what did I say? Oh, hair drive. Sorry about this guys, here we go again. La, 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 la. Okay. You don't want to do that, y'all leave, right? Run to the fridge and just get yourself up to eat. I'm sure you're there anyways. <laughs> just go in there, get something to eat, and come back, and we'll do the finishing touches. Okay, so now the final touches, like the, the dark, 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 darks. So let's go with the, um, let's go with this big tree here first. Now that tree is bright red, like a fall color of red, burgundy. Yeah, I might as well do it that way, what the heck. And this brush, if you push it like this, and you kind of tilt it sideways, you can get some really cool looking effects of leaves and little dots. Learn how to use your brush. A lot of people just take a, a sheet of paper sometimes and just see what your brush can do. Can it do this? Can it do this? What happens if you do this? You know, just what happens if you use a dryer? You know, um, there's no instructions with this brush, so you need to tend to learn how to use it. Oh, look at that, nice. <laughs> and so you just um, try different things with your brush to see what it can do. There may be things that you'll learn about the brush that nobody's ever gonna teach you because it's like, you like doing it that way. I tend to always push my brush. You can get some real good pine needles this way if you kind of push it like this. But that's on a pine tree, so don't do that on that. So here, a little bit of more. A little bit of more. <laughs> a little bit more, a little texture here. Bring it down. Once it's wet, remember to float some pigment in there. And what colors? Any colors. Doesn't matter. Just put colors in there. You use them all else, elsewhere. You can put any color you want in there. I get a lot of questions like, what color did you use there? Whatever, use whatever color you want. Which color do you like? I like purple, it's gonna be some purple in there. Let me tell you, right there, see? Look at the purple right in there. The value is dark, it's dark. That's what has to make it come forward, it's contrasty. If I use a red, of course it's gonna come farther, even farther forward. There's so many different, you can use, um, Sponges for this. Um, you could use, oh, I should have taken off the mask white first. Oh, well. Let me just wave this. Yeah, let's, let's take off the mask white now. That's a good idea. So the masking fluid, they call it mask white, masking fluid, rubber cement. Um, usually, um, you have a rubber cement pickup, which, hold on, let me do that one real quick. So this is a rubber cement pickup here. See, there's a little flat thing and you just kind of rub across it and it picks up your masking fluid. Do it slowly. Don't rub while it's wet. Also, make sure it's totally dry. There's nothing worse than going into an area that's damp and then you ruin everything that you just did. Because you always you take it off at the end of the painting and that's when you, the worst time to ruin your painting is at the end when you spent the whole time in it. So, go slow. Couple up here. Now you see how it's white underneath? What I could have done is do the sky first, put the mask on top of the um, color also, and that's another way of doing it. And then um, do your wash over it, and then you'll have the color from the sky. But you can do it this way too. You just take the color now and tone them down a little bit. And the color I used in the very beginning, I'm sure it's still on my palette somewhere. The orange here, look at that. So I'm just gonna just Tone them down a little bit so they're not so vibrant white because really they're not white and they're the color of the bricks that are on there. But you can do it where things that are the lightest light can be white with paper. That's always fun to do. Now I didn't um, take that one off because that one's still wet right there. Like I just said, I don't want to ruin it. I'll take this part off right here though. Do that 
it's wet right there, so. See, I don't listen to myself. So it'd be all dirty later. See, that's what happens when you go when it's wet. It gets back into there, see? All for a reason. And here now we'll go with a little bit of shadow color up here. Not sure what that is. Not sure why I put mask right up there. That was a little window up there. A little thing over that. Little windows. Some of my students have been asking me, um, you know, they, they can't get out there and take pictures anymore, and they don't have any pictures. There's a bunch of places on the internet where you can actually, um, they have royalty-free images. And so now while you're stuck inside, you can't get out there and take all those great pictures. Um, there's Pixabay, Pixabay, P-I-X, Pixa. I'll put them into the, um, into the Facebook um, video thing. Pixabay, there's also Pexels. P-E-X-E-L-S, Pexels.com. Pixabay, I think is P-I-X-A-B-A-Y. And these are all royalty-free images that photographers let you, artists use, the images. And also Unsplash, Unsplash, U-N-S-P-L-A-S-H, Unsplash. And that, I'll, put them on, I'll put them on the site, on YouTube also. These these go up after I um, after I get back to my studio. When these are done, I put them down Facebook and also well Facebook they're already there. But you can watch this whole video again if you really want to if you miss something, just watch it again later. If you want to try to paint it, go ahead. I don't I don't mind. Give it a shot, see what you did, and just go through little by little um, and stop the video. See what I did for that wash. And if you do the painting, let me see it. I wouldn't mind seeing it on my website or on my Facebook page and then just um, show it in the video section where you, where you comment. So that's supposed to be like a shrubbery over there. Like a big shrubbery. And then there's a more of a green tree. Because I don't use much green in my paintings. I'm not a big fan of green. Yeah, if there's a color you don't like, why put it in? <laughs> it doesn't have to be that, you know, the color of the object that you see in the picture. Do whatever you want. Do whatever you like. You know, that's a color that's nowhere else, so why would I do that, see? Get rid of that. Just put a little bit of dark on top of that. This is one of those really cool cypress trees, I think. Put some cool. Last year at this exact time, I was in France teaching a workshop in Lemoux, France. And um, I know a lot of other teachers I know have. Linda Kemp has gone there. It's a wonderful place. Right. And he also, um, Chris over there, does these bike. Um, Bike, not workshops, but bike, um, biking around the France, and um, very cool. This is a tree, so it should have a trunk, some branches, right? Any little details, antenna, getting a good Wi-Fi up there. Boy, thank God we got Wi-Fi, boy. So here we go with the um, darkest darks and the super, super details. The super duper details. Those are the ones that create things. Like the side of this bridge, and actually there's a couple of little sketches over here. The statue right here. I just have a few statues there in Rome, I bet. <laughs> For what I hear. So here we go, and we're going to put people. People sitting around, standing around. Make them all six feet apart. All right. There we go. And here we go now with some people in the front. 
And they're just gestures. They're not um, portraits, and they're not really tight at all. Actually, they're called um, David's Dabs. Um, they used to be called Bob's Blobs, Robert Wade. I, I learned them from Robert Wade mm -hmm. in Australia. One of my mentors. Irving Shapiro is my other mentor. Taught me everything I need to know about watercolor. And that guy's got a bike. And this person has a dog. And this person has a backpack on. I think you can see that, right? Here we go. Just a little bit of color. I want color here. I want you to see these people, a few people in this. This is my area of interest. Remember, I said this is area of interest. That's where I want you to look first. And people are a great way to making your eye go to a section because you're, we're human and we like to see other people. We're just going to instantly look at other people and writing. So if you want to put writing in there, that um, we're just, we're programmed to read things. Read things and see animate forms. So, of course, these things have shadows because the sun's coming this way. Got people way back there. Now I'll get some... The bridge has got to be detailed. I'm not going to put every brick in, but I do have to put these in. So it makes it look like a bridge. Oh, there's some windows here I forgot. The detail is the tedious part, but it's the part that makes it look really cool. So spend your time on the detail. Don't rush through it. I know it's at the end of the painting, so a lot of people just like to rush through that because they're tired of doing it. Spend some time on your details. It makes your painting look good then. It shows the object. It shows what the painting is about. Ooh, look at this. Oh, this guy. Look at this guy. Right there. See? He's reflecting in there. With that's going through there. There's some more people on the bridge. They're walking across six feet apart. There we go. A couple lines here. Looks like there's... See, it's nice when you've been to the place because then you can actually tell what's going on there. I've been to, that's one place I haven't been to yet. I, I've been to Venice. I did a workshop in Venice. Done a workshop last year in France, but maybe I gotta get one here in Rome one of these days. And then let's make this one. So let's say, um, I made that dark now, but that should be really light because the sun's coming this way. But I didn't put any mask weight on there. So what could I do? Oh, you know what? I could put white there. I know a lot of people don't like that, but I don't mind. So I'm gonna put a little white in here. Look at that. Boom. Light, isn't that great? John Singer Sargent used it. I'm going to use it. Put a little back here. All right, a couple of lines here just to show details. Now this wall right here, I notice it's a little bit darker, and my picture is a little bit darker, and actually it's vine, there's a lot of vines on it, but we're not going to get that, that crazy with it. But I'm going to negative paint around these little objects that are on the bottom. I'm not sure they're probably holding the wall up. And so um, anytime you can negative paint into a watercolor, it's a really good thing to do. Look at that watercolor look that um, is, is the thing that you do in watercolor. If you really want to learn how to use um, negative painting, take Linda Kemp's class. She does some amazing, amazing teaching of the negative painting. And now even acrylic. She does some really unbelievable acrylics. All right, so... Let me look this over, and I think we're almost done. into the oh man I should have seen my head's in the way huh sorry about that guys I just looking at the thing now and my head's in the way <laughs> <laughs> all right
right, so I think that's about pretty much about it. That's all I can see, maybe a little bit right here. All right, remember next time I have to put my head in the way of the, of the paint. One more thing here. A couple things here. All right. I'll take the tape off and I think we're good. Here's my rigger. My rigger brush. Put this antenna. I know this is antenna right up here. Because I will take later on and I will take my um, need a rubber eraser and just erase the pencil lines. I don't normally don't do it a little bit, but if it's like kind of sloppy looking, I will take the, uh, the eraser over and get the pencil lines off. Don't do it all the time. Just sometimes. And let me think one more, anything else? I think that's it.